air. Hello, Sarah Louise. It is episode 696. Yes. Yes. Uh, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Oh, you know, just the use over here. Yeah. What's the use today? Mm, I don't know. Just I digitized the blooper oh. reels from a couple challenges. Seuss. Um, yeah. I couldn't believe it when I saw some of the clips that you had. These are great. I put a couple things on my close friends on Instagram, which you can have access to on our Patreon. But watching these blooper reels, because blooper, you think of like somebody slips on a banana peel or right, something. Right, right. Or, or like we have to, we flub the lines and have to do it again or something like that. Yeah. That's not what these are. No, the blooper reels to me are more like home movies from the challenge. Like and behind the scenes. More reflective of the actual experience you know just the silly yes. nonsense that you do to pass the time and whatever so whenever i watch those i reflect a lot about our experiences and i mean i'm already in the middle of a midlife crisis for sure and so that adds to it because i just get all wrapped up in emotions okay what kind of emotions are you experiencing is it like I reflect a lot on like things I did maybe that were wrong. I'll think I should apologize to that person or I should reach out to that person or because like, Mm. you know, it's so far gone. Like it's so long ago that to me, it's like, oh, I should have appreciated that more. I should have kept in touch with that person or whatever. I don't know. makes me emotional. I think any, if, if, if the, a uh, teen look filter on TikTok showed us nothing. <laughs> yes. Sarah, yes. Yeah. Which, by the way, I tried. What? And I put up the, the, you can see the video of me trying it for the first time on TikTok. You uh, put it Sarah, up. I didn't I see am. it. Yeah. And it's very anticlimactic because I'm like, this is not younger me. I huh. didn't look like that. Oh my god! It, it doesn't look like a. It, to me, it does not look like me. I don't know if it's my hair color. I don't know if it's, but it just was like I felt like I was looking at almost a more masculinized version of myself. Like it had, it was like me with a more square jaw. I was like, I don't know. What? This, and I thought I got the wrong filter for. It. I tried it a few different times. That's and I'm like, crazy. nope, this is the one. I saw all the other videos. It did not make me emotional at all so That's maybe really watching funny. former episodes of the maybe watching past episodes of the real world will do it but. i mean it might because you did have that black hair back yeah. then and all that so it is like a different person so and i had I like know. much chubbier cheeks like i had this like rounder face totally i had this like really round face and that is not i like that who is that do that you looks have like- a blooper reel from the real world brooklyn Oh, I bet I do. No I'll digit- way. I bet I do. I know where that is too because I re- recently moved. So I'll go through that. I'll find that. There's got to be a, a like a shit they should have shown. That's what they always called it. Oh, did they? On Real World? No, I'm sure they oh. called it the blooper reel. They d- Which that. isn't put on the air. It's just private. It's just like Oh, with the no, crew. I do not then. Are nope. you serious? I Didn't do you not. you guys have a rap party? Oh. No, we did not. And you want to know why? Yes, we ruined it. <gasps> so the very last day of filming where they're then they have like a whole thing that they do where they invite us into the back and they like we watch the video and laugh the, and blah, 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 blah. The like private crew room. Yeah. Yeah. We got into a fight on the last day. Yeah. And so rather than wrapping everything up, they brought all the cameras back out and videotaped us all fighting and our last and we we ruined that afternoon with our, our fighting. And that's it. That you and lost the it. opportunity? Yep, didn't see it. And so why did they cancel the rap party? Well, they didn't cancel the rap party. They just didn't we didn't get that kind of behind the scenes, like we didn't get to see any of that stuff like when we normally would. Oh, and man. they had a I don't really remember the rap party and not like one of those, like, Oh, I had such a good time. Like, I honestly don't even know if we did what. Yeah. Maybe you didn't. We had like a nice dinner. Oh God. Who wants a nice dinner? And I sat next to 
John Murray. Murray. Oh man. Yeah. Well, I think I offered to like babysit his kids or something. Oh Lord, they like mercy. It probably my age at the time. I don't even know. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll have to like look into your yeah little treasure I'll look trip. into it. But yours is good. Yeah, I'm gonna keep posting clips because it is hilarious. There's one clip of Timmy like doing something silly, but it does feel like you're watching like footage of like high school kids or college kids like from, well, because you are from way back in the day where like before social media, when people just made funny faces, when you put a camera in front of them. And it was a totally different relationship that we had with the camera during that time period. And man, I'm nostalgic for that time. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine you how you feel. Yeah, and I wonder, because I haven't been on the show since, what, 2008 or something. I mean, that is a long time in terms of media changes and the way that they changed the production of the show. So I do not envy all the cast members and how they're always thinking about, like, am I going to get canceled? Am I going to, what am I going to say on uh, social media? And then hearing what people's opinions are of them. Mm Oh, no, thank you. Mm Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. feel bad for those people. Mm-hmm. Okay, moving mm. into Oof, Brain yeah. Candy Land, not Challenge yes. Land. This is sort of just like me patting myself on the back. Oh, I love doing that. Let me pat you on your back <laughs> as well. There was a guest on Howard Stern's show recently, and he was a doctor, and he was promoting a book, something about like human behavior and the way animals behave and sort of giving tips for life or whatever. And the clip that I had seen was he was talking about this study that was done where Google had acquired all this um, ancestry data and they were able to make um, inroads into like what makes us who we are. Wow. Yeah. And they found through this studying the data that they acquired that how long you live is only, I forget if it was four or 6% based upon your genes. Okay. What? So he was heralding this as like, this is the best news ever that he claimed in this clip that 94% of your longevity is quote in your control. Because, I don't know about that. Exactly. Because How about crossing the street, you get hit by a car. What's what are we come on? So like four or whatever percent is genes. And so he he made this leap that yeah. then ninety some oh. percent is in your control. And I got so mad and I said to Adam. I went off on this monologue about how that guy's a doctor and he knows Mm -hmm. that the data does not say that the data says, however much is your genes, but so much of our lives is out of our control. Where were you born? Right. What parents do you have? What kind of home life do you have? What's going on globally? What are you in the middle of a fucking pandemic? What food are you given? All these things that contribute to your health and well-being and therefore how long you live that absolutely have nothing to do with your genes, but are totally out of your control. And I was ranting and raving and he goes, okay, so because we're, I'm going to start doing TikToks. He's like, you need to make a TikTok about this. I'm like, yeah, I do. And I'm like getting wound up. So like the next day, LA Times says, there were in this book that this author wrote almost a hundred examples of plagiarism <gasps> and that they stopped, oh. they stopped printing the book and are not selling Simon and Schuster are not selling it anymore because I can't believe it got that far. Right. Because he's a fucking white man. He's a dude who the, the way I described him on Howard was mm-hmm. it's I said it was like the human equivalent of clickbait he wanted to do uh-huh. this, like this attention grabbing line, but it, he knew that it wasn't true. I knew that he, as a doctor, knew that he was not telling the truth with that stat. And I was so yeah. mad about it. Yeah. Because of the viewer, most viewers don't know much about, right. you know, scientific 
methods and things. So like yeah. they would just take that at face value. And so when I read that his book was full of paper, I was like, this guy is a total shyster. Totally. I'm so glad I sniffed it out. Yes. This, uh, those kind of like confirmations yeah. about, um, like our own like gut feeling, like our instinct about people. Let that be all the confirmation that you need. All, yeah. Every all the info that you need. Trust your gut. Listening to it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because Ab- how often are we wrong about those kind of things? Pretty fucking infrequently. Mm-hmm. I know. I don't get like that. Like who cares? I'll just keep scrolling. But this one, I was incensed. Yeah. There's that feeling of like. Mm. I know that. Yeah. He was misrepresenting the facts and I knew it. And so anyway, I felt just uh, vindicated and whatever. This is also reason for why you should definitely go hard on TikTok with the facts. I know. I know. I'm going to go hard on TikTok. Okay. But after I get wound up, then maybe I'll have a little bit of dad grass to take me back down. You need some after the conversations with, you know, people (laughs) drive crazy. And you're right, mm-hmm. Sarah. Like sometimes it's the patriarchy or whatever. You get wound up about it and then yeah. you got to have a little mom grass. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because, you know, life is hard and maybe you just want a, a little mild toke. Yes. As the kids say. Thing, a little, you know, to me, there's something relaxing about a ritual too. Mm-hmm. And it's fun to kind of just have, I don't know, like a wind down ritual. I love it. We love winding down around here. Yeah, we do. We love winding up and winding down. And these are legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body, mellows your mind. There's, you know, tinctures or you could do the smoking kind, um, pre-rolled joints, 100% organic. Very low in THC. So these are like the old school 70s vibe where it's like no big whoop yeah. and high in CBD. And it's so no big whoop that it can be shipped to all 50 states. Mm-hmm. There are no limitations on that. All dad grass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Right now, dad grass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order. When you go to dadgrass.com slash brain candy, go to dadgrass.com slash brain candy for 20% off your first order. That's dadgrass.com. Slash brain kitty. Yes. Anyway, I think his name was uh, Dr. David Agus. Mm. So, Agus. Look out for that guy's bullshit. For real. Dude. Yeah. How come he's on Howard Stern, but you're not? That's what I was like. Why is he on Howard in the first place? Right. And he must be a real good scammer. Like, yeah, like self promoter, like somehow yes. gets. And, you know, it, yeah. And it's like what we were talking about a couple weeks ago, that this kind of being an extremist online gets you. Yeah, I can understand his impulse yeah. because there is a lot of incentive to do that. Yeah. But I just was shocked that a doctor would do that. Oh, gosh. You know? Yeah. But no. anyway, moving on, let's keep the rage going. Maybe you yes. saw this. A girls basketball team. Oh, 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 Susie. I'm so (laughs) glad you said, uh, uh, how did this slip my mind? It's infuriating. Sorry. Sorry. I just got a little wound up (laughs) over the facts. Yeah. Okay. So girls basketball team, fifth grade, fifth grade girls basketball team in, gosh, was it? Alabama. Alabama was told if they wanted to continue using their practice venue, they had to pay to be in the league. Yes. Uh, but the league is a boys' league. And so they could participate in the league or not, but they had to pay to to use it anyway. So they thought, okay, fine, we'll participate in the league. But um, they are participating. They're competing against only boys' teams. Mm-hmm. And they won the tournament. Yep. They did not get the trophy. The trophy was given to the second place boys team that they defeated. Yep. Real bad optics here. Real bad. (laughs) And then they tried to be like, whoopsie, like we've sorted it all out. We made everything's okay now. Who said that? Well, it was at the end of the article I read. They were like, oh, the Alabama, whatever, like rec center that was 
running that like doing this is like, oh, this was a miscommunication. No, this was not a miscommunication. This would have had to have been about five miscommunications. And if it's that many, then you're actually like doing something wrong. Yeah. I mean, they they claim that that it was made clear from the start that if you competed, that you weren't eligible to receive the trophy. But why? Right. They that's the problem. They made them in order to pr- practice. You pay to be part of the league. So they're like, yeah, well, we're going to be part of the league. We're going to play in this league. They did pretty well. A lot of games they only lost by like one point. And now the finals come up. They play in this league. They actually win the whole thing. And because technically it's a boys league, they give it to the second place boys team. All those boys know who the fuck they lost to. I know. And I'm thinking, what parent would be like, yeah, take that trophy. I'd be like, excuse me, do not take that trophy. If my son won, quote unquote, won a trophy. I'd be like, go give that to whoever kicked your ass the hardest absolutely whoever you feel like did the best job defending you and like blocking your shot go give that to whoever you think give that to that person yeah because come on i don't even care if it's like i want to know how the miscommunication went on the other side like what they think happened yeah because as the article said it shows that when women are more qualified work harder and achieve more than men they are still not worthy. They argued that this was the same in reverse. So if a boy's team beat in the girl, but when was that ever happening? That's not a thing. (laughs) That's again, because the girl's team isn't the default. The girl's team is the other. Mm -hmm. The men are not the other in that situation. Yeah. That's not the same. That's like saying, when are we having white history month or whatever? It's like, you don't get to say that. The default is regular months are you. Shut up. Right. That's why I feel like, no, every league, just like when they say basketball, what teams do you think they're talking about? And then you qualify with women's basketball. Yeah. There you go. That's it. NBA, WNBA. That's all I need to say. I never even thought about that. They don't call it M. NBA. NBA. (sighs) Yeah. Everybody, fuck off with all of your defenses. Not you guys. You guys are wonderful. Just those people. I never thought about that, how it's NBA and WNBA. So there you go. I hate everything. I know. blood pressure is probably I know I need some data grass all right okay I'm also mad about this there was a New York Times article about this dude who 20 years ago he stopped wearing shoes and it's all about what his life is like wearing no shoes wherever he goes right again a privilege thing come on we know what would happen. We've talked about this a discussion on, in beach cities where you have those like 13, 14, 15 year old girls who are running around their little bikinis inside the ice cream shop. And if you had a person of color come in there with no shoes and no shirt, they would be kicked out because of the sign that says no shirt. They'd no probably shoes, be no arrested. Service. Yeah. So yeah. again, I'm mad about this too. Absolutely. This is so privileged. And he does acknowledge that. Okay, good. But he still keeps doing it. Yeah. Like, he still keeps wearing no shoes to freaking Whole Foods and wherever. Oh, you can't do that. (laughs) He's doing it, Sarah. He does it. I don't know why. I know what people are going to say. People are going to be like, what's the difference between the bottom of your feet walking around in a grocery store and the bottom of your shoes? I know the argument. (laughs) I love when you're in a bad mood because you then mirror exactly what I think all the time. Like even when I'm in a good mood. Yeah. 
<laughs> like I'm so mad at everyone right You're now. You're such I an get idiot. It. So stupid. It's like just stop being ridiculous. Like so imagine. He said like one time. Who is this guy? Okay, they, he lives in New England. He's a white guy, uh, as if you didn't already know that. And he originally stopped wearing shoes leading up to, I think, like a bunion surgery. He had foot pain and all that. And this is one guy had to stop wearing shoes because he got a bunion. Now he's trying to sell everyone on not wearing shoes. No, he's not. This is not. classic. My thing doesn't work. My thing works for me. And now it, it, I'm going to apply it to everybody. Oh, no, Lord. no, no. I don't even think he cares if anybody else does it. He just doesn't want people to mind that he is wandering around. And he's chosen this lifestyle. He, he doesn't understand why he should have to wear shoes in a store. Why does it bother you if he's not wearing shoes? And my answer is because that's disgusting. Yeah, and that's we it. have a social contract mm -hmm. that we all abide by mm -hmm. in society, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. there's all these things that make us a society. And if you violate any of those things, you are an outcast. Yes. And so you cannot be upset at us when we treat you like one. <laughs> so one store came over and it's like, you can't be in here without shoes. And he said, why? And they were like, well, because it's a... No a shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> I, it's, it's like, don't ask why. That's just what the sign says. He said, well, they, they said, well, it's like a safety thing. You know, it's food oh, and all that. Definitely. And then he goes, well, if it's a safety thing, people are more likely to break their neck wearing high heels. But I'm like, no, it's not about your safety, dipshit. It's about us and your yes. disgusting feet everywhere. Yes. And also the safety of my eyeballs having to look at your <laughs> fucking nastiness. I'll tell uh. you what's not nasty. <laughs> please, That's please. Athletic greens. You know, Am I right? uh, you are. And Eli and I were just talking about this the other day about how long you have to do something before it becomes a habit. Yeah. Because now we've been on our daily athletic greens in the morning. Every morning. And I can say I'm on six and a half weeks. Wow. Oh. So yeah, perfect. And I notice such a difference in my skin. Yep. Holy crap. But he, we were saying like, is it a habit? And I said, yeah, I think we've officially cr like met cross the point where this is now a habit that we do every morning. Yeah. I just go for it. It's like have it before your coffee. A, what is it? Uh, uh, AG1 by Athletic Greens, the one yep. I use. And you just take mm -hmm. a scoop, put it in your water, shake, shake, shake. And also you're getting like instantly glass of water in the morning. That's already Yeah, good. right. I was one, I was like thinking the other day, like, man, it's been a minute since like I've had a, any kind of like breakouts. My skin feels so good. And then I'm like thinking this as I'm drinking my, <laughs> what could it be? Yeah. And then I'm like, Oh, they did say that this is going to happen. Well, and that's what they say. Uh, better gut health, which I was telling you is so yes. important, yes. increased energy, immune system support. And it's just, it's a good way to set the tone for the day. Like you're saying, yeah. It's just like, I did this, check the box. And it's like the thing that you can do for yourself. And I'm a freaking addicted to the uh, vitamin D. Oh, yeah. You just put a little oh, yeah. drop, so drop on your tongue. It's like a lifetime supply. Lifetime supply. Here's the deal. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one year supply of the vitamin D yeah. and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash brain candy. That's athleticgreens.com slash brain candy. Check it out. You can get all your vitamin D. Yeah. There you go. Out of nowhere the other day, Eli goes, I'm really glad that we have the travel packets. And <laughs> I was like, I'm going to need some more information around <laughs> what the hell you are talking about he's like oh for our trip to florida i'm glad that we have i'm like oh okay 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 like we weren't talking about breakfast. you'll know right i was like i well, need more and i'm glad too and you guys can all have this also okay so back to this guy with no shoes yeah so i understand his point like on paper that we I don't also understand the point that peeing in a bush would also be more convenient and better. And why don't we just do that? But guess what? We don't. Yeah. 
Right. There are rules and we have a setup system and everyone's agreed to it. And so that's fine if you want to be a weird type of person, but um, then you probably are going to have to be asked to re- be removed from certain stores because they have the right to yeah. deny service. Like, look, go frolic in the woods with your bare ass feet. I don't care. Just like, don't bring them into Costco. Please. Don't. Well, they got the samples. He also, um, just like to give you a, a sense of this kind of guy, he only eats with chopsticks, even though he's American. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, the type. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's just, just trying to be annoying now. I'm sure yeah. he's great. He's probably nice. He probably has all the like, I don't know. Oh really? Because he needs reggae music playing constantly. No, or else he can't this function. is not, <laughs> this is not a real thing. That's what it said. Yeah. One of my favorite jokes is reggae music. I love that song. <laughs> That's hilarious. Isn't that a good... Anytime, anytime I'm in a group and somebody goes, oh, I like reggae music. I always say that joke. And country music. It also applies. And techno. I'm stealing... All works. Yeah. I'm anytime goes, steal oh, it. I love country music. Country music. I love that song. I'm going to steal that, but for hip hop. No offense. Yeah. That's fine. You're allowed. <laughs> hip hop. I love that song. So... Fuck. You guys are like, yeah, yeah, we get it, Sarah. I know, but it's so funny. The more times I say it, it just makes me laugh. And watching Susie laugh also makes me well, laugh. Well, because any musical genre that you don't like, yes. it does feel like it's just one song, right? I mean, that's but just let's a all great agree. Show. Reggae is the but yeah, right? come on, the real like because there is here. only one, um, you know, metronomic, boop, percussive. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. That, is that it? That's every song. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Three little birds. So he wants it in the background at all times. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I put this in my notes, but apparently he, the only numbers he can remember are radio stations. And this that's... sounds like now we're 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 inching towards maybe neuroatypical. Well, and he acknowledges that. He does say that. He goes, I forget uh, his wording, but it was sort of like, yeah, I clearly have a touch of the spectrum. As whatever. my brother puts it, touch of the tism. <laughs> yeah. And like, okay, that's fine. But put shoes on. Right. I would also like to link this to our previous episode on ABA and make this a uh, n- argument for behavioral therapy. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Because... This is why where I was just having a conversation with my brother the other day. He said, you know, I find that I can kind of lean in or lean out of my symptoms, depending on my environment, depending on what is needed at the time, depending on like, so this guy, in order to, I don't know, follow social norms, maybe needs to lean in a little bit to the idea of wearing some shoes. Well, he, because obviously when you do this, you develop a very thick layer of callus all over yeah. your feet. And so he has to check and make sure that there's no like glass just lodged oh, in there good. because he can't even feel it anymore. I don't like that. He's people always ask him like, how do you navigate the train? And he's like, it's easy to navigate the train. It's navigating people. That's hard. Oh. And I, I guess that's I true when yeah. you violate, you know, right. social order. Yeah. There's got to be a line. That's just it. It just has to be. And it is for safety. And is it though? I think it's not. I think it's just for our own comfort. I think sometimes the shoot, like you could step on something then like if you're like walking through a grocery oh, store and like then they liability. step on glass and then you sue them oh, because okay, they have broken yeah. glass on the floor. Like I think about, you know, there is a strict closed toed shoe policy at camp. I am, I enforce this because the amount of like injuries we have from kids and flip-flops or like getting like they're walking in their flip-flops on the deck and there's rusty nails and who, you know, who knows? Like we just need them to wear. I was walking in my Crocs, shout out to those guys. And they, uh, I stepped on a fish hook and thank goodness the fish hook got caught in the Crocs. And I was like, thank goodness that this wasn't a, thank goodness we have a closed toed shoes at all times around the deck policy because 
this could have been some little campers piggies. Yeah. Okay. Now you're talking liability. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Yeah. This but is I mean, like safety. You know, but, if he wants to like go out on his own, but if you're going to be like, that's how it goes. The, I just, I just, don't want to see your feet ever. Anybody, no. unless we're at the beach or something. And that's also where you're allowed to wear fewer items of clothing. Yes. Right. We have different rules in different contexts. You weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. I don't know why they chose to write about him in the GD New York Times, but they did. New York Times? Honestly, it was. It was. Oh, Lord. This does feel like when you say, like, we have some people don't have enough stuff to worry about. Mm -hmm. They need a little, like, why are we creating problems where problems don't need to be? Yeah. Like, he had bunions and he still him to not put over his it. energy into like developing a more functional footwear that would then maybe make you. F- I don't know. I just feel like this energy could be applied elsewhere with like <laughs> some helpful redirection. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play a game. Oh, okay. this game is called Guess His Occupation. What do you think oh. the no shoe guy does for a living? Oh, okay. <laughs> He, I probably would have guessed professor or something like that. No, you know? IT. He's in computer programming. <laughs> He's a comp- he works in something where he has to be online the majority of his time. No. No? He, it's it. it's even more like obvious. He's a Pilates instructor. What? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. This <laughs> now I hate him more. <laughs> Why? I, because if you have the ability, like, <laughs> there are a lot of rules in Pilates. There are a lot of of oh. rules in fitness. There's a lot of thing of of. But you don't wear shoes, so that worked out great. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it feels like you can't. It's not like you're not able to follow the rules or, or follow social norms. You clearly do it over here. That like you need to also apply that oh i don't know i don't know yeah. why this makes me so angry Yeah, because there's like a structure like, to it mm-hmm. like at first i was giving him a little bit of like compassion and maybe a little bit of like understanding and empathy and like okay we're talking like neuroatypical this i get it it could be like a feeling thing it could be a sensory thing it could be you're a pilates instructor <laughs> you could put on your shoes I love that that's what set you off. I don't know why. I was like, because every Pilates instructor I know has their shit together and is like such a functional human. If this guy is functional enough to be a Pilates instructor, he should be able to figure out the old footwear dilemma. (laughs) I feel like... I want people to know, like... Maybe he just needs someone to guide him. Maybe he needs to use better help and get some, you know, therapy. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a great service for populations that often do not get access to therapy in the same way. Or maybe you have health insurance that doesn't cover that. Or maybe you're in an area like me where when I went to go look and find a therapist for my family, uh, there were two in all of the state that were available that like... And it doesn't fit. It is a wonderful, wonderful service for. Yeah. And this is one of my. Find therapy. And that is one of my main complaints about just the industry in general. And it's not anybody's fault, but the reality is that for most people, therapy has not been accessible. And Mm -hmm. so I love that we're broadening Mm -hmm. the access to more. As a therapist. There's a lot of people that I can't work with and a lot of people that, you know, state lines. There's a lot of limitations. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. Should, ugh, I hate. And this is a, a really great way for people to get help that's affordable, accessible, works with your schedule. You can find a therapist that is a really good fit for you. I found a wonderful therapist that was super helpful. And I just needed a couple sessions to just like get my mind right about a couple things. And then it was like, okay, good. Glad we got that, that. Well, and who doesn't need that sometimes? Right. A lot of people don't have that. I'm willing to, I was, oh yeah, it was really, really, really helpful for me. 
Yeah. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash brain candy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash brain candy. And if I wasn't clear, this is therapy that you can access from wherever you are, your phone, uh, your computer, whatever. You don't have to go anywhere. And, you don't even have um, to put shoes on. You do not have to put shoes on. So we'll allow it for that guy and mm-hmm. for all of you as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's the story on that fella. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Well, I guess we're speaking of shoes. This was so fascinating. This was a Reuters um, news agency investigation into, you know, these companies that like do the greenwashing thing where they oh, pretend yeah. like they're environmentally friendly and then mm-hmm. they're actually not. It's all, just, and you even hear like when you listen, when you watch Shark Tank, you he they'll actually kind of acknowledge that this is just about PR. This isn't actually about, you know, environmentalism, mm-hmm. but that it's important for companies to be sort of forward facing in regards to acting like they care about the planet. Okay. So one of these companies had one of those dealies where it was like, if you donate your shoes. Oh, they, yes. Yeah. We're going to send all these shoes to make like playgrounds for people in friggin' Indonesia or something. Okay, so Reuters decided to see if that was true. And they donated 11 pairs of sneakers. And in underneath this, the little <gasps> pad, yes. they put one of those air tag trackers that says the location oh, of the shoe. Oh, I love good investigation (laughs) so like underneath the padding of the shoe they would put these air tags and so they could watch the shoes go where they're gonna go and zero of them went to any kind of charitable thing and none of them were used for playground (sighs) they ended up in like um those markets where you can like kind of like a flea market or a co-op or whatever are you kidding me yeah they were being resold. Uh, ew. <laughs> yeah. How, this is what, Susie and I, before we started this, we're just like talking about, yes. you know, like just being disappointed in just like, I don't know, the human race, humans, yeah. whatever it is. How, yeah. like, I want to know how the people who are profiting off of the sales of these shoes, the people who started this company or bought this company, whatever it may be, fucking sleep at night, Mm -hmm. saying one thing and doing something totally different. I, I, I can't wrap my head. I mean, I just don't have, I don't understand what that is because I don't have that. Like, if I say that I'm going to do something for how, however ridiculous it is for somebody, I, I feel like I will go to the ends of the earth to do that. Even if it's done, however, lo- it doesn't matter. Like I really, it will haunt me and how they can just totally I know. fucking lie. I think a lot of times, for example, in this case, the company was Dow and Dow makes um like chemicals and plastics and stuff and this was their attempt to look like they aren't garbage and when they were called out by Reuters and Reuters was like hey what WTF yeah they said oh you know like we use a third party like they always like they put love it on, to pass the buck yeah, yeah. and Take they're the like we're not gonna work with them anymore you know we are gonna investigate but really I think it's more of what you're describing, I think they avoid that yes. guilt by being like, uh, we don't really know what they're going to do with them, but like, right. it's not us doing it. It's them. And like, we tried or, or we did just our sort of like avoiding. And, and, right. Yeah. But it's avoiding and, blame. Like, you know what you did. Yeah. And they, it's like the title said, Dow said it was recycling our shoes. We found them at an Indonesian flea market. They, all 11 pairs of donated shoes were exported and, and 
you know, either resold. They're not or- donated. There's somebody who's spending money on this, like, and profiting off it. Like, I just. <sighs> it's so disturbing. I just want people to like do the right thing. Or you don't actually have to do that. I never yeah. even heard of Dow until right. this happened. Or I yeah, don't just care don't do, if right. my plastic just sell company, your fucking shoes. Yeah. No, they're like uh they're not even in the shoe business. They do plastics and petroleum based chemicals. They're trying to do this to say, like, we're not that bad. Like, yeah, we make plastics, this, but like uh, people. That's even worse. I can imagine if you're like a shoe company. I was thinking maybe it was like, like Johnson Tom's Johnson and they also owned this. And then you like also do, you know, and that's like your marketing tool. Yeah. But instead you just used it as a mark with no backup. Like, yeah, it's always the fucking bottom line. And it's not about doing, I hate that. Yeah. Just be in the business of being a yeah, chemical just company. Leave chemicals. Yeah. And make a nice donation or something that what you're, what people, I feel like anytime a company that big is doing anything good, it's only to like, give them a break, some tax break somewhere, some like they're benefiting from it. Nobody's like. Well, and I'm fine with that. I don't actually need my, my companies to be in the morality business. Yeah. But I really hate when you pretend right. to be, you know, high-minded ethical, and then you're really just like, oh yeah. Yeah. That's the grossest. Yes. Because hypocrisy. Yeah. Well, that is terrible. It's terrible to scam people, but I'll tell you what's not terrible. And that is yeah. ritual vitamins. Absolutely not terrible. Consistent. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Tasty. Which usually you don't say about vitamins. Right. Trust me. If I can continuously yeah. take vitamins for years, yeah. anyone can. Yeah, because that's I right. I, I've, I've now forgotten that you had that thing where you yeah. couldn't even swallow them because they taste so bad. <laughs> yeah, it'd be one of those, like, I was like a, an eight-year-old where you like, yeah, try like, to oh, teach oh, them. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because these smell and taste like mint. And they are such a great part of my routine. And now they have the protein mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I have been loading up on. Adam leaves it out now. Like, I don't like leaving stuff out. I like putting things away, including yeah. like my toaster and stuff like that. But he's like insisting now because he wants me to like get into these routines. Yeah. So we leave out our protein so that we remember to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Because... He probably isn't great. It's packed full, all the stuff you need, no sugar, um, but it doesn't taste like that. It's like, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. And once you try essential protein, you won't want to go a day without it. Lucky for you, Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash brain candy to start Ritual or add essential for women 18 plus. Do that to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash brain candy. You know, you need a little vitamin. I mean, yeah, that's just the facts. Okay, next up, we got a little bit of old gossip on the way here. Oh, yeah. Old celebrity stories, classic drama at its best. No need to wait for entertainment updates. This is gossip on the vintage press. We have the whole story. Let's take a look at those facts. Addicted to drama and you just can't stop it. Well, you better listen to old gossip. All right. Old gossip. I was looking into Charlie Chaplin. Like you do. (laughs) And... I what? What are you laughing at? I mean, just a little funny story. My grandma was Charlie Chaplin one year for Halloween, <laughs> but then she took her top hat off. And, and then she got people thought she maybe was dressed up as something else. And she was like, if you <gasps> dress as Charlie Chaplin, make sure that you keep your top hat on and jacket all night. Or people will think your tiny mustache is you pretending to be somebody else. Yeah. And that was actually a, an important part of Charlie's career because he was born like five days, within five days of Hitler. And they both had that mustache. 
And so that's why Charlie ended up making that film. I forget the name of it, but it was based on Hitler and it was a parody, a satire yeah. of Hitler. Um, because people would often make the the parallel and he yeah. felt like he had to sort yeah. of acknowledge it. Um, okay. So his life is pretty wild. He had a terrible childhood. His dad abandoned them. And then his mom was mentally ill and she ended up in an asylum and never got better. I think she ended up dying when he was 14 or something. So he had like a terrible scenario. He was in an orphanage and stuff like that. So I am prefacing all of his adult stuff Mm -hmm. by saying like, this is a guy who had a bad, I don't know, set of circumstances. Yeah. 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 And that maybe contributed. And I want to know your feelings because yeah, Okay, so he he had several wives. His second wife, um, she was a teenage actress, and she oh, was six. Now I don't like that my grandma went as Charlie Chaplin either. <laughs> right, that, the Charlie whole thing Chaplin, is problematic. Hitler, yeah. Oh, so he she was sixteen. He was thirty five. <gasps> yeah. Oh, right. Okay. And they get married and she, well, actually she was pregnant and that's why he married her because he would have been charged with statutory rape if he weren't married to her. What? Okay. Yeah. She, he knocked her up and he married her so he wouldn't be charged with. Charlie Chaplin is a fucking pedophile. Okay. Yeah. So that's the first one. Then. Okay. Let me see if I get this right. So then she, it was an unhappy marriage, probably because he didn't want to marry her in the first place. And he would just work to avoid seeing her. And then they had a bitter divorce and she accused him of infidelity, abuse, and harboring, quote, perverted sexual desires. Oh, 100%. That is old timey for fucking creeper. (laughs) And... She got a settlement of six hundred thousand dollars, which was the largest one that you can imagine at that time. That's like six million bucks. This is honestly making me like sick to my stomach to oh, think no, about I'm how. Sorry. No, I mean no, it's fine. It's like, but you think about how this is. This was known, right? Yes, very. They were not choosing publicized. to take him out of the public eye. This was like we're once again like hiding. Remember what was the documentary that we watched? Girl, twenty four oh, yeah. old, yes, something like that. Yes, it's about women who, a uh, oh, single woman who girls, girls, yes, they were girls mm-hmm. who was sexually assaulted at, at one of these like industry NGOs, events, yeah. yeah, industry events, and and really just kind of pulled back the curtain to a lot of what was going on at that time, and this and still like, is. Still is, yep. And how it really is, like, exactly what's happening right now. And how that all got buried and hidden. And this is... Well, this is why I wanted to bring it up. Because there's more to the story, which I'll go into. But I think there remains this sort of, like, wink-wink mentality about teenage girls. And, like, they're you know, seen as, or it's like a considered a gray area. Not in the name of the law. No. That's no. the problem. No, but in it's, the public opinion. Yeah, that's the problem is that public opinion does not match that. Yeah. Because like, I don't, I, I can't imagine anybody either in a healthy relationship or that's like a therapist or a doctor that knows how to identify unhealthy relationships telling you it with that there's any relationship between a 35 year old and a 16 year old that is appropriate. Yeah. Well, it gets worse. Oh, great. Okay. So she gets the settlement off. She goes the end. So then, um, Oh, he has 
was uh, somebody that said he was the father. He had an affair with a woman and she said, you know, she, he was the father of her child. I don't know if he really was, but he was found to be not the father, but like they didn't have proper testing back then. So like, Mm -hmm. how do we know? So, okay. That was one thing. Then, um, he meets two weeks after that case was settled. Mm -hmm. It was announced that he married his newest protege protege that. mm -mm. Yep. 18 year old Una O'Neill. He is 54. And they stayed married for uh, until he died. They were, he (sighs) claimed she was the love of his life and they were happy. And that's what made me Google him in the first place. I saw this video on YouTube of him with her in their home in like Switzerland. He had to leave the U S for some reason. Like there was some problem, you know, you know, when they did the thing where they like accused everybody of being communists and stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. Got it. It was one of those deals. So he like moved to Switzerland to like avoid it. And that's where they lived and he was with her and they seemed so happy. And I was like, wow, did he just have like one wife the whole time? Like, so I wanted to know. And then that's when I found out. And so he was 54, she was 18 and they were together for like, however, 20 years or something, 30 years. That just sounds like he groomed her and then he kept. It sounds like Woody Allen to me. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I was thinking the same thing when you said that. Because a lot of times what you hear with the Woody Allen stuff and with this Charlie Chaplin stuff is like, well, you know, she was 18 or like in Woody's case, she wasn't actually his daughter. She wasn't actually his stepdaughter, whatever. Like they they make all these like claims that like technicalities to yeah. say like it's it's fine. But for me, it's more about the big picture. Yeah. And the power differential. Patterns. There. Yes. Of behavior, yes. whether it's Woody in his films where he consistently posts uh casts like teenagers to be his romantic leads when he's a fucking 40 year old and then he marries this young girl or charlie where every wife stays the same age and he keeps getting older that kind of thing it's... And i'm so bummed out because i was i wanted to put something about charlie in my comedy bathroom but i can't uh-huh yeah don't put that in there But then you think, well, is it because it was back in the day and like they didn't care? That like that's the (sighs) I never know. I don't know either. But I can't in in today's time imagine that to be anything because if you look at a 17 year old, we're gonna assume she's 17 when they met, getting like that doesn't seem it I would call that a vulnerable party, like that somebody with money and with power who then yeah. can say something like, I will get, I'll give you the best life. And I get, I would imagine she probably had a life that was, she wanted to escape from. And it says in the Wikipedia, Una, the, the last uh-huh. wife worshiped him. Yeah. It doesn't seem healthy. Mm-hmm. How about the relationship with the 17 year old and the old dad and the, in the, a uh, movie we just saw the documentary we just saw on um stolen youth about the Sarah Lawrence thing. Yeah. Because that seems similar. That's the same vibes. You think that's healthy for like a 50 something year old man to be with a 17 slash 18 year old girl. Right. Yeah. That's why like the technicalities don't interest me. I'm interested in the big picture and like what is going on here and how it happens because you it's not as if you turn 18 and then everything's fine and nothing's weird about it right um so it doesn't even matter to me whether he met her when she was 17 18 19 he's 54 right and he has a pattern of being attracted to very young girls right and so i'm that's why i preface by saying this is a guy who had a terrible upbringing and he was probably emotionally mm-hmm. stunted and had all kinds of like issues. Mm-hmm. I have no idea, but presumably. Mm-hmm. I don't but it's like such that. a bummer because he is a genius in other ways. Mm-hmm. I hate when that happens. Yeah. 
I guarantee my grandma did not know this. <laughs> but Your the women in my family do have a problem with their picker. And so, I don't know. Do you feel like you have a sense, like, when you meet a guy, whether he's a creep? Yes. And what do you think is the common denominator with these guys that makes you the red flag go up? Hmm. It's just vibes. Yeah, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't. I There's a feeling that I get where it's like this hair is on my neck stand up. I don't want you to name them, obviously, but are there people like famous people where you like have a weird vibe, but there's nothing Um, like to accuse them of? Yeah, we've already talked about it. Fucking Ezra Miller. Oh, okay. Well, that's different, though, because, well. But when I first saw him in, we have to talk about Kevin. He was a he was a child then. And I was like, this does not feel like acting. Mm hmm. Then um, I'm trying to think of who else I get. Well, that don't from. name them. Well, I, I I won't. I'm just trying to think of like, I I can't think of anybody like. No, nobody I, springs to mind. Nobody springs to mind. But I bet if I thought about it, I would be able to pull something because I definitely have had this feeling where I'm like, I think that person. Mm-hmm. I can tell you the one who I never saw coming and I didn't think that about was Matt Lauer. I don't know what it, I, all the other ones I'm like, yep, 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 yep. Even handsome guys. Doesn't even matter. Puck, that guy who played, oh, I can't remember. Puck on Glee. I can't remember what his real name is, but he, he oh, Mark Sailing. I met him in real life and I got that feeling and I used to have a crush on him. And then I met him and I was like, oh, like, I don't oh, like this feeling. Crush on you. And that's why I have a yeah. crush on you. And then fucking gets caught for having child pornography and kills himself mm-hmm. while awaiting trial. I will say though, and I knew since that one. the Matt Lauer thing came to light, I I think we've talked about it on here. So many mm-hmm. of the documentaries you see are show footage of him interviewing women in a way that's very aggressive, uh-huh. very condemning and, uh, projecting ultimately or at least revealing that he thinks less of them than he thinks of himself even though he is doing these terrible things yes oh behind closed doors yeah and the the arrogance i didn't notice it either leading up to it but now that i'm seeing that footage knowing what i know it's like now you can see it you are a real pos yeah Oh, yeah. I think he's one of those people, too, that, like, doesn't think they did anything wrong. Oh, 100%. A lot of them are like that. Most of them. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. That's why I, the, the thing that we're, is this, is the, it being like a, a sexual drive like that, because if you're biologically being drawn to that, it's not like you're choosing to do wrong in your own brain. You're choosing to do the thing that is right and feels good. That's fucked up. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a problem. Yeah. It's really disturbing. Really disturbing. Um, okay. Let me see if I have anything else before we go. Charlie Chaplin, is he canceled? He's dead. It's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. I guess uh, I'll keep what we're using. It's just another argument for, you know, how you always say like, we shouldn't make statues of anybody or anything. Yeah. We just shouldn't like, people I know are people. there are those Charlie Chaplin, like it, it, it's hard to like see somebody get awarded and a star on the Hollywood walk of fame and, they're in all these like wax museum, da 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 da, and to know that they were probably having really inappropriate relationships with young women. A lot of people, though, on the other side of the argument, would use his successful marriage with his final wife 
as evidence of like, this wasn't sorted. This wasn't scandalous. This was love. And I understand what they mean. But Again, if- look at that girl from Stolen Youth. She says the same thing. If you've been conditioned, if you've been groomed since a teenager, you can't, those are not your own thoughts anymore. Sorry, I'm yelling. I'm, well, I, I, I know this sounds crazy, but I I even think about my own life and how my first husband was my professor. Mm-hmm. That now would mm-hmm. be seen as a big problem, at least in terms of the power differential mm-hmm. that exists between a professor and a student. And I know that it's like a funny, like <laughs> common theme and, you know, mm-hmm. fantasy or whatever about like the teacher and the student or something, not, not like high school, but like college. Mm-hmm. Um, but even though I get that now, I get that there was a power differential. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it that way then. And it certainly didn't frame. It didn't the, feel like that to you. No, it didn't feel like that in terms of our, the dynamic after we were together. It wasn't right. like he's the boss of me or something. Right. Have you met me? I right. am incorrigible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so like there wasn't any kind of like, I'm just a little girl and he's the boss. Right. Right. So I don't know. I, I, I think it's nuanced. I think it's yeah. complicated, but it is because then we're like, cause you're when right. You're 54 and your wives keep being 16, 17, 18. Maybe you want to look in the mirror. Yes. Do a little investigating. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fair to ask anybody with a fit, like, like if you're a a person with a 55 year old dad, do you think it's appropriate for them to be dating somebody your age? Your friend, yeah. Your friend. That feels weird, right? We feels like that's not an appropriate relationship. It's funny though, because in a way, the, the woman is at the peak of her power at like 18 in terms of what's valued by society. Right. Right. And so that's why it definitely didn't feel like he has some sort of outsized influence. I like, he should be so lucky. Right. Uh, You know, so it's hard to make sense of it all, but. Oh, you're so right. And I go, and I'm like, is that even a a feminist position of me to be like, she doesn't know better. And she like. Well, but I mean. I mean, I was an adult for Pete's sake. I was yeah. freaking 21. Yeah. Um, but good grief at 16. I definitely didn't know better and right. neither did Charlie Chaplin's wives. Right. Simony. I don't know. All right. Woo. Well, anyway, we got emotional about the challenge. Well, I did anyway. Um, reminiscing about the past. Susie, like got a little pat on the back by herself <laughs> about being right yeah, about doctor for calling out for Vegas for see that's like listening to your gut i know i felt really good about it because i'm not usually very good at that i'm easily tricked by charisma oh yeah okay well listen to that feeling girls basketball team got screwed out of a trophy <sighs> I hope, I hope that they, yeah, I hope that, that something really wonderful comes from this, that they get like, I don't know what it is. They, yeah, they, good stuff. Like, I want them to be sponsored by like Nike or Adidas or something like that. And then the boys teams just have yeah, to suck it. Suck it. I don't care. We don't if get a trophy, do. but you do get full sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> And if you uh, donate your sneakers to be made into a playground, they probably are not being made into a playground. Oh my God. So many disappointments. Scammers. Yeah. I'm over it. Scammers. I'm sick of it. Anyway, we love you guys. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for using our codes. Yes. Thank you for being patrons and brainiacs and listeners and being so nice to us. We love you so much. See you next time.